Ambassador uh, Kori Tuwaku, Vice President Pence also had some advice for uh, the member states of APEC. Let's uh, listen to what he had to say. And so today, let me say with great respect to all the nations across this wider region and the world, do not accept foreign debt that could compromise your sovereignty. Protect your interests, preserve your independence, and just like America, always put your country first. So Ambassador Kuritiwaku, what we heard there was Vice President Mike Pence effectively echoing the words of his boss, President Trump. Uh, but what do you make of the fact that he's saying that uh, countries need to put themselves first, put one's country first, he said, rather than taking a more multilateral approach? Yes, country has to be first, no doubt. But of course, in the present context, uh, no country can uh, develop themselves alone Particularly, even if they develop, they can't survive. Now, for example, if I would get an example, now Sri Lanka, one of the main export items is the tea. Uh, out of our production, 90% we are exporting to the rest of the world. Without uh, global trading arrangement, we would be not able to sustain our uh, tea industry, similarly even our apparel industry. Therefore, we would like to work with the rest of the world uh, whether we need market taxes or as investment sources. Now, for example, if I would take, the, as I mentioned earlier, the USA and the EU is our main export destinations. But in, in case of imports, it's uh, China and India. In case of tourism and uh, even uh, investment, now mainly it has become China and even uh, Japan, uh, India, so therefore, we have to work with the rest of the world. But uh, we recently introduced the Belt and Road Initiative has given us an opportunity to join with China to develop our infrastructure. So they will use that opportunity. But it doesn't mean that we are taking a side of any one country. We would like to be, friend to, to be friends to most of the countries, since we need the cooperation of most of these countries as export destination or as an investment sources or as import sources. Right, that was a point that was made by the Singapore uh, Prime Minister last week at the ASEAN summit when he said don't force us to choose between sides. Ambassador Heine, uh, how much progress was made do you think uh, on the promotion of free trade and linking uh, the fastest growing economies of Asia with mm -hmm. South America? Mm -hmm. Well, there are various things here. One thing that is on the table and was uh, is already now in effect is uh, what is known as the TPP-11, you know, which is the successor to the original TPP, known as CPTPP. And Australia recently ratified it in its parliament, so it's now, it's now come into effect. And that, it seems to me, is a very good thing. Now, what we're waiting now is for the RCEP, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which has been largely led by China, uh, to move forward. Now, I understand that not much progress has been made there. Apparently, India is dragging its feet. We'll see what happens, but I think it's very important to move forward on that front. They are expecting an agreement next year, though. Well, uh, hope springs eternal, yeah. they say. <laughs> and uh, the yeah. other project, which is a bit further down the line, is the most ambitious one, is the FTAAP, the Free Trade Area of the Pacific. Although, given current circumstances, I wouldn't bet the farm on it. I have lots of acronyms here. Yeah. Right. Peter Petri, when we look at uh, an organization like APEC, I mean, made up of many small countries, and I'm wondering to what extent uh, do their interests get supplant supplanted by the bigger negotiations that take place between, say, the United States and China, or the United States and Japan, Japan and China, for instance? Yes, I, I think, I mean, uh, uh, several people made this point that multilateralism isn't just a choice. It's really a part of modern production systems. Small countries, large countries cooperate with each other in, in complicated ways uh, to produce uh, modern products. Uh, the components come from many, many countries in any given manufacturing process. Now, to make that possible, the relationships, uh, the, the borders have to be crossed by products many times, and countries have to have very similar rules. So this is what multilateral, uh, multilateral mechanisms try to establish. And the ambassador, I think, was quite right in pointing out that the uh, CPTPP, the, the, the new version of the TPP, plus the RCEP uh, mechanism, which probably will come into effect next year, 
are, are in ways uh, in this region especially, uh, they are Asian-led initiatives which try to preserve uh, a, a rules-based uh, 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 fluid trading relationship for the production systems that have made such a big difference over the last uh, few decades. And so I, I think the small countries as well as the large countries very much depend on this level of cooperation and the question of going back to bilateral uh, relationships of abandoning multilateral rules I think uh, actually makes a lot, of, uh, a lot of countries nervous. I should say by the way if you look at this region virtually all of the countries in the 21 APEC economies with the exception of uh, Canada and Mexico uh, uh, have their primary relationship with China. In other words, China is their largest uh, uh, trade partner. So it's, uh, Japan is just on the edge. But uh, the, the point is no, no country uh, would want to choose. No country should have to choose because productivity depends on the multilateral system working well. Ambassador uh, Kuritiwaka, you are the ambassador from Sri Lanka, a relatively small country. Um, what are your thoughts on the fact that a small country like Sri Lanka, uh, its interests could be overcome by you know, the bigger interests of bigger countries like the United States and China? Yes, uh, we are a small player. Of course, our total economy is still less than 100 billion US dollar GDP. Therefore, we have to depend uh, with the rest of the world as I mentioned, with as a, for foreign investment or for our export markets, even the transfer of technology. So we have to work with the rest of the world. Particularly, we are very happy that Asia is rising. Uh, many Asian economies, uh, now of course China has already become the second largest economy. Indian e economy is emerging. And the ASEAN has come very, very sound position. Therefore, Sri Lanka would like to join with these countries and to uh, accelerate our rate of development because still we need uh, uh, better life for our people. Therefore, we would like to work with the rest of the world. But as I mentioned, uh, if APEC will become a better effective organization, it will definitely help countries in South Asia, including Sri Lanka. Songshang, uh, you know, we hear a lot of tough rhetoric coming out of the White House from President Trump, uh, very public rhetoric. Yet he also tells us that he has a very close and good personal relationship with President Xi Jinping. Let's listen to what he had to say just last Friday about this. Let's watch this. China wants to make a deal. Uh, they sent a list of things that they're willing to do, which was a large list. And it's just not acceptable to me yet. But at some point, I think that we are doing extremely well with respect to China. I have a great respect for President Xi. I have a great respect for China. But China has taken advantage of the United States for many, many years. Sort of a mixed message coming out of uh, President Trump there. He says, we have this great relationship. And then he immediately says, we have had a problem with China for many, many years. Mm. I think that, that, that that's uh, very uh, reasonable for me, because he's always having this maximum uh, pressure. And at the time he has been dealing with uh, our President Xi in a very uh, good way. I think he has his uh, fundamental interest that is working for uh, American economy and also make himself to be re-elected in 2020. I think his calculation is that uh, this year is the year of uh, maximum pressure, but uh, next year he needs a deal to be done with China because that is only going to benefit him or U.S. economy. And uh, I think he, he needs a few months, maybe 10 to 12 months, uh, if any kind of official negotiation will be started immediately after this G20 summit between uh, him and uh, President Xi. I think uh, uh, let us be hopeful that by the end of next year, there will be a kind of a good deal between our two countries and the U.S. economy will be getting more and right. more uh, stimulation and China will be uh, having its own kind of uh, uh, benefit. Right, Ambassador Heine, talking about next year, the next APEC meeting will be held in Chile. That's right, in what? Puerto Varas, a yeah. small town in the lake region of Chile, very beautiful. What are prospects for that? Yeah. Well, as I said earlier, if the prospects are to be determined from what happened in PNG, uh, we should be concerned. So, uh, it seems to me that much depends on uh, the uh, evolving relationship between China and the United States, as you just said, in the, in the coming year. Um, I think it would not be good if uh, 
we again get a situ into a situation in which some of the major world leaders do not show up at the APEC uh, summit. APEC summit uh, the APEC summit and the G20 are considered sort of the top diplomatic summits in the world. And leaders normally are very reluctant not to attend because they miss out. You know? So that is one concern. And the other, of course, is that we uh, may be able to move on um, uh, trans-Pacific free trade. You know, the, the, the main theme of the meeting next year will be connectivity. You know, and, and that, of course, is very important. I think I've mentioned to you on previous occasions, there's a project to uh, build a fiber optic internet cable between China and Chile, which will be the first across, first internet cable across the South Pacific. So th those are sort of concrete things we need uh, to move forward in the, in the very important relationship between Asia and uh, South America. And I also uh, will say, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, Chile is enjoying very good uh, communication and in relationship with both China and America. And let us hope that Chile can do a much better job next year. <laughs> Thank you. I was uh, just going to add that uh, I agree with my colleagues that uh, uh, this is, uh, we're, we're at a, a very critical point and there are options available which are, which are positive options which lead to solutions. And it's also very important to remember that it's in no one's interest to prolong this level of uncertainty and this level of confrontation. The, the world economy is slowing down. I mean, it's slowing down certainly in Asia, but also in the United States, stock markets have become very jittery. This is not a time when, when we want to give a signal that, uh, that the two largest economies in the world are, are going deeper into this uh, tit-for-tat trade war. So I think there are a lot of reasons to be uh, hopeful that there is pressure on the leadership of, of both countries to begin to find uh, a more collaborative route to solving the disagreements that they do have. And there, there will be disagreements for a long time. I mean, these are two very large economies competitive in many areas, and it's inevitable that, uh, that, that they will uh, bump up against each other, and there just simply have to be better mechanisms to resolve those, uh, those, uh, those dilemmas. And Peter, these countries, as well as the other major economic powers around the world, will have that opportunity to send out a strong signal uh, later this month at the G20 summit. Absolutely, and there is a lot of work underway. Uh, China, for example, presented a, a, a fairly complex set of proposals to the United States. President Trump, incidentally, said that they looked very good to him. There were there were a few uh, elements that he wanted to see improved, but but on the whole, they looked good. And I wonder, for example, whether the harsh words from uh, Vice President Pence came in part because President Trump wants to have a wider uh, uh, negotiating position. He can move in various ways and hopefully in a positive way when he meets with President Xi in, in Buenos Aires. Okay, and that's where we have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnold Nido in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.